Why can't I talk to a real person? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where I've been answering your questions and sharing tech advice since 2003. One of those questions that I've gotten over multiple years has been, why can't someone answer my question at the service that I'm using. Uh, it's very common for people to want to be able to talk to someone, to physically talk to someone, to get an answer to their question when they're having a problem with some of the online services that they're using. Um, I'll be blunt, it's not realistic anymore. It just isn't. Um, the reason is actually really simple. People are expensive, <laughs> they really are. And that's true even when they're overseas. Having someone available to answer the phone for the thousands upon thousands of users that are using most of these free services is just, well, unrealistic. It's such a high cost, the service couldn't be free anymore. Honestly, this isn't about whether or not it's right or wrong. It's a business decision. Ultimately, it's a business decision. To be clear, this isn't about how some company should or should not provide real people to answer the real phones with real questions from real people like you and me. It's about understanding why things are the way they are and what you need to do differently, perhaps, in light of that. In the long run, this is all about becoming more self-reliant. Remember, free is never free. There's always a cost. And one of those costs for the free services that we use is the fact that there's no support. You're on your own when it comes to getting support. Now, there may be peer-to-peer -peer support forums or Q&A or FAQ that you can go to, but the cost, one of the real costs of using many free services is that there is no direct person to person, free support. There is nobody to call, there is no phone number, and rarely is there even an email address for you to send your questions to. Good free services have extensive facts and extensive online documentation, hopefully written in a way that makes it actually helpful for the average consumer. Mediocre services often don't, and that, again, is part of the cost of doing business with them or using their services. A lot of companies and a lot of services have multiple tiers. So the lowest tier won't have any uh, customer support available to you. The next tier up where you actually end up paying some money might. I want to be clear, rarely, and I do mean rarely, are those structures trying to push you into doing anything you don't want to do. It's simply a reflection of the cost. Real people answering real phones costs real money, and that money has to come from somewhere. As a result, they reserve that for the paying tiers. Free tiers get what you pay for. You're not paying for anything, so you don't get real person-to-person -person support. Businesses make these decisions based on marketing. Of course, they may hope that their free product or service will convince you that their product or service is worth it and worth money to you, but it's usually not based on support. It's usually based on the value of the product itself. Again, these are business decisions. It sounds horrible, it really does, but it really is just about money. Regardless of whether it's a business attempting to make a profit or a not-for-profit organization just trying to pay the bills, Customer support options are costly, even when they've been outsourced overseas. If you display too many ads, you lose customers. If you don't display enough ads, you, you don't make enough money to run the service. You can try patronage models and donation models, and they are usually sometimes somewhat effective, but usually not enough to actually cover the costs, and certainly not to cover the costs of real people answering the phone. So. What does this all mean to you? Well, ultimately, what I want you to do is have reasonable expectations of what to expect from the free services you enjoy online. They're amazing. The value that you get for some of these services is incredible. But 
you do need to make informed decisions when you go about deciding to use these services. And one of the factors in that decision is the realization that there will not be a person to help you from that service. You'll be on your own. You will need to be, as I said, more self-reliant. You'll need to become more adept at finding your answers online, either in facts, in support forums, or on sites like askleo.com. If that is not something you can live with, if that's not something that works for you, then honestly, you need to make different decisions. The services aren't going to change. What they offer is what they offer, and they don't offer support for free. You may need to choose a more premium service that includes technical support, typically for some kind of cost out of your pocket. If you can't afford it, then again, the best thing you can do is continue to work on being as self-reliant as you possibly can and look for your help from the other resources on the internet, including places like Ask Leo that aren't actually officially affiliated with the services you're using. Free ain't free, it just isn't. For links related to the article that this was based on or to leave a comment, visit askleo.com slash 31060. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.